It's um, 6.15 on um, May 23rd, 2022, and we've posted the agenda in three places, right? I saw a couple of them and on the website and emailed interested parties, so we're properly warned we can move forward. And um, I think I'm going to start off initially with the meeting minutes from the May 9 meeting. And I didn't see any corrections. I that did not yet. either. No, so I'd move to approve those minutes. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Frank is here on Zoom, so he must put a thumb up or something, I presume. Yeah. I didn't read them noon. <laughs> so I, I, I just abstained. I didn't vote for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah I didn't see them. So, okay. So. okay. Um, we have, uh, did you say, um, Todd is here? Yep, we have. Oh, on Zoom. On All right. Okay. Zoom. Yep. So, um, Todd, you want to speak? I have your letter here about the um, this year's uh, 100 on 100 relay race. And um, I guess you're reaching out again to um, see about um, having a stop here in Rochester. Do you want to explain what you're talking about? Um, OK, well, first, first I'll um, uh, give you a correction. This is the Vermont Grand Fondo, not the 100 on 100. Um, so this is a different event. Yeah. Oh. So this that, is so so that way this is why name. we're not getting this the right is, ones. To yeah. answer. <laughs> That's why we're getting weird emails. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. All right. Well, a good thing that you're here to stay. So this yeah. is Vermont. Now we know what Andy's doing. What's the date? The date is June June 25th. Oh my God. So there's um, uh, multiple things happening on June 25th. What um, what are you um, what were you um? So I guess this application on 100 and 100 is not the one to no. look at. So I guess it's a good thing you're here, Todd. Let's start fresh. With you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I was okay. Sorry. Um. So yeah, we've been we've. Should should I give you a brief on the event? Is everyone familiar with it? Or? Um, yeah, you might as well give us a brief while you're here. Yeah. Okay. So um, it's been a few years since we came through Rochester due to road construction, which is um, why it's you know it's happening again this year, right? Um, on where on on <laughs> Route One Hundred between Stockbridge and Rochester is scheduled to be resurfaced this summer. In fact, they've been working on it for the last few weeks, um, dealing with the culverts and recently in the village, redoing the uh, stormwater drains. Okay, good to know. Um, yeah, I didn't see it on the uh, VTRANS schedule. Is that not a VTRANS? It is. It yeah. is? Okay. I'll have to look again. Well, <clears throat> that's fine. Um, we've 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 had to deal with culvert work before, so it's nothing new, um, and uh, you know, not worried about the repaving either. So, um, so the um, we're a, the Grand, Vermont Grand Fondo is a is a 100 mile. Uh, it's been a, it's it's a we have three routes, 180 and a 40, but our 40 doesn't come through Rochester. Our 80 mile and our 100 mile will come through Rochester. Um, tip and we'll be um, we do we're a four gap 100 mile r ride, so we're not a race. Uh, we do have a race element, which is uh, time segments on each of the gaps, but we don't do a, a full event time. So we're we're. Uh, we're not a race in a traditional sense, um, and we're timed on the gaps for the national national ground fondo championships points. So um, it's recreational for ninety percent of the event. Um, the um, years past, we've we've come over Brandon Gap and then come head north on one hundred and gone over Middlebury back to the to our venue. Um, this year we're doing reverse. We're coming over. Uh, and the, this is the second half of the loop. So we come over Middlebury Gap, down through Roche Hancock, Rochester, and up over Brandon Gap. Um, so the uh, the hope is to um, have a rest stop uh, in town. Um, 
there's uh, either either on the town green or or I did notice uh, there's a little gazebo down from the down from your shop. Um, that north. Looked, I, on the north side. On the north end of town. Right. Yeah, on the north end, mm -hmm. um, which is on the correct side of the road, so we don't have to have riders cross the road to to get to a rest stop, which the town green would be. Um, so you know. It seemed like a possible spot. I wasn't one hundred percent sure what, who owned that, or if that was, you know, that's, if that was a town. Yeah, that's a town town park, yeah. and that would be much more appropriate than the the main green or the main park because there's that's already got um, some events planned for that on that day. But it needs to be that noted that you can't block the firehouse, so you have to maintain people not parking vehicles. In right. front of the firehouse. Yeah, at the most we would have two vehicles, which would be the people who are attending the you know are uh, are manning personing the uh the the rest stop. The riders won't have yep. uh, you know vehicles. There's no support of that like individual rider support. We have <clears throat> we have tech support and, and motocross or motorcycle support for the event, but no one will be parking beyond two vehicles. Okay. Um, there's a park and ride right across the street. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And, um, you know, we'd have two, two to three 10 by 10 foot tents. And we have a bunch of um, put a handful of uh, bike racks oh, yeah. out the front. So the bikes wouldn't, you know, scattered, yeah. get scattered yeah. over. So we keep everything nice and tidy. What times? Okay. Uh, times, times would be around roughly around 10 o'clock to i put six on the application that that's probably a bit late um but it'd be about 10 a.m probably more likely to to, to four at the latest did you send an application in because i don't have one here i did this morning this morning what an email yeah uh-huh I, I didn't see it did you send it to the town clerk <clears throat> I sent it to, um, should be to, is it Julie? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see here. Uh, actually, I sent it yesterday to Julie Smith. Okay. Okay. All right, well, we have um, Kristen, who is, um, there's another applicant. What were you just talking, indicating there? Yeah, I submitted an application for the same day um, for the fundraiser for Eric Ballinger. At, at this park by the fire Yeah, station. we'll be um, like our cookouts at the firehouse, mm -hmm. and then we were hoping to like overflow into onto the park that day. Onto the park that yep. day. And put a porter tank down there for the kids to play in. Mm -hmm. And then there's another event <clears throat> which has been in the planning stages for six months and, uh, on Dorothy main, Robson. Uh, right. And is that on that park? And that's going to be um, around parking around the park and mm -hmm. at Pearsall and at the auditorium. Well, well, on 100 uses the school. The school. What about the yeah. Lions Club yeah. or? Um, well, that or Lions Club or, or the Rochester. I know 100 on 100 uses or, or the school. The, the school it? might the be um, might be more appropriate. Get three pounds. Yeah, it sounds it's like both easy. parks. Boy, we have two parks. Uh, um, to, busy day. Busy. There is there is also the Lions Club Park, which is just north of town. That first bridge north of town um, mm -hmm. has kind of a steep little gravel um, access down to the parking area. So I don't know if that would be um, as as um, yeah. as uh, as. There's um, that. Isn't the there a? Ride area. Ride. Ride. They're on tents, then they could just use that side of the road. That way, if it overlaps, it wouldn't be too bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The school, the school is. Um, close, yeah. It might get a little, a little tight there. Like that point about not having to cross the road and just be on the same side of the road. Well, you hear um, what the uh, conflicts are. What What are you thinking, Todd? Um. Well, ideally, uh, uh, be on the right-hand side of the road would be great. The the um, the park and ride. Um, I think I looked at. Yeah, that's on the left side of the road, and it would be. 
right across from, I would think that perhaps that might be utilized for the fundraiser that the um, fire department is holding um, at the same time. The, yeah. Now, now yeah. the school, the school parking lot on the south end of town has got plenty of room and it's on the right side of the road and it would be, um, you know, not crammed in with any of these other two events. Okay. Yep. How, what, I'm yeah. looking on, I'm, I don't, you know, I'm not really fussed. Like, like, you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of going off recommendations a bit yeah. from you guys. You know, I'm um, not like, I got to be here. I got to be there or else, you yeah, know. Yeah. So is, is school over by that date? Yeah. yeah. School is over, but yeah. I think you have to ask the school permission to use the yard. Yeah. Yeah. So that would um, send you to the school for um, permission to use that, that parking lot there. Yeah. Uh, so that'd be easy and easy out with pavement. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I mean, totally. I mean, it sounds like there's a lot going on that day. Um, I no, don't know the 100. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing else the rest of the summer, but that, yeah. <laughs> that day. So are the, is the 100 on 100 having a rest stop there in town as well? They are not the same day. Um, no, theirs is in August. No, theirs is in August. Oh, they're in August. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That they typically use that they have for many years. Don't, don't they use the school? I yeah. think they do. Yes. So yeah, I think it would be pretty um, pretty easy to get permission <coughs> from the. the yeah, principal. we can send Erica's. Um, Todd, Julie, and I can send you um, Erica's information at the school, so you can reach out to her if you'd like. That would be that would be great. Um, okay. And uh, yeah. Okay. And I'll pr and I can pr I'll pursue that. So does this include um, bringing in a porta potty or anything like that? Yes, yeah. we have a porta potty. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, um, good thing we're talking about it now, eh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Busy yeah. weekend. Yeah. All right. Um, well, they'll send you that contact information, and um, we'll um, we'll look for the grand fondues. Yeah. And do you have any um, questions? I believe you have my my general pr road road use permission application already. Uh, just Julie's checking through her email really quick. We didn't remember seeing it when we got in today. <clears throat> that that we that got sent to you. Um, that got sent to you a little while ago. Okay, um, so which it is, was the part. But road use is state highway. Yeah, it's a state highway. We don't really have, I mean, it's it's nice to be alerted and to know about it, but I don't think that I, I think that um, you have my blessing. The uh, VTRANS and the DPS both require me to have permission from all the towns that the, the event goes through. Um, and I can send it to you again. Um, but yeah, when last time we came through town, it was this, the same thing. You guys, um, they yeah. had a signed form that they want. Yeah, you want to resend that? Yeah. And then maybe we could um, include that when we um, send you the contact info for the the school. Yeah, that would be that would be great. Um, I'm sending it to you now. So, but you, if you need to get on to other items, I don't need to. Yep, yep, no, I think we got it covered. Okay, cool. All right. Does he have the right email address? Yeah, he's I have that. Julie's. You want to give me the other, is there another person I need to email this to? Um, you could send it to, everything is spelled out. It's assistant town clerk. Okay. At rochestervermont.org. Okay. Yep. Okay. Great. Thank you all. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yep. Sorry yep. for the confusion. Bye. Yep. Good evening. All right. Um, next guest, we've got um, Burley Griffith talking about um, hooking up to the town sewer. So where is your um, 
Where's your place? What are you thinking? So <clears throat> we are just north of town. Um, we're kind of diagonally up the hill from the end of Robinson Drive. Um, the Terry and Eric Bowen are our are, are nearest neighbors, and we're just after them. Um, they are on t- town water and sewer, mm-hmm. um, and I have talked to them about possibly putting a Y into their line. Um, and going on down the hill, there's a pump station at the bottom of the hill at Robert Mayer's old house, um, and then it pumps over to the to the uh, Leach Field there um, by the by the tennis courts. Um, so basically, we're just we're hoping to get that process moving, um, and we're here to see what we need to do as far as permitting or asking for permission from you guys. And um, we're, I thought Terry Severy was going to be here, um, but apparently he is is not um, to, to speak a little more to the sort of town sewer aspect mm-hmm. of it. So is that what th- you're here to talk yeah, about? Yeah, so a typically bit? this wouldn't obviously come to the town for other than to Terry and um, what's his name? Uh, the fellow from Du Bois and King that, that um, oversees the town water and sewer allocations. Um, but this one's a little unique, and um, <clears throat> the reason we're here is I was chatting through it with Terry Severy, and he mentioned, as just in the general you know, request of, hey, is it even really possible for this particular residence to hook on to town water and sewer? What are the options? Because um, Burley and his wife's options on their own site are either minimal, impossible, or prohibitively expensive. So I started to look towards the municipal system route. And Terry and I have talked at length about it a couple times. And there is one manhole, I'm actually looking at the town water and sewer map right now, that's basically on that um, piece of property that was Beth Brock and John Graham's that was a town buyout. Mm-hmm. Um, ideally, in a you know the best case scenario would be that this, this particular residence could just gravity flow right to that manhole and it would just be a simple request of the town for allocation um, that, that you know doesn't require a select board meeting boom you asked Terry Severy we talked with um, Jeremy Rathbun is the name came to me at Du Bois and King yep do we have the capacity yep yep, yep. go through the permitting of the state um, what's a little tricky is, is gravity flow to that manhole, which is the closest manhole that's, it's the only manhole that's on the other side of uh, the brook that comes down, and it's, um, you can't really get gravity flow from Burley site to that manhole. So Terry said, you know what, there's one, the next thing that came into the conversation is that there's a pump station that's down in, um, the, on private land, um, on Robert Mayer's piece that's across Robinson Drive from his building. Um, But Terry, I wish he was here to use the words himself, to try to paraphrase, he's, um, he he said that the permitting status and um, condition of that pump station is questionable. That it was not necessarily ever, in his understanding, properly permitted, but that it does pump to the town uh, system to that manhole that I mentioned on the former Grand Rock lot. And so Terry started to, to talk through, you know, getting that pump station um, upgraded, improved for the two residences that are on it, uh, permitted, um, watertight so that it doesn't take on storm water, which according to Terry is apparently an issue, significant issue with that, which then is an issue for the town system. If, a pump station that pumps to the town system is taking on stormwater. That's no good. Um, he was concerned about the age of the pump, the fact that there's only one <coughs> pump um, with multiple residences. And he thought it, it might be um, an opportunity for that pump station to get permitted, improved, replaced, upsized, any of the above, um, as part of um, both helping the town system helping this particular landowner, helping those other two landowners that are currently flowing to it and that at some point are going to probably have an issue on their hands, is, is what he said. Um, and 
you know, that, that certainly all seemed very reasonable, both in the best interest of the town, these landowners who are have an immediate issue, the other two landowners who have maybe an issue down the road, at what time we don't know. Um, I don't myself have any um, direct knowledge of that pump station, so everything I'm saying now is what I, what, as I understand it through Terry. Um, but he is obviously very knowledgeable about the town's water and sewer systems. And, and then as a side note, and the kind of the other reason we're here is because in talking with Two Rivers about um, the eligibility and feasibility of ARPA funding to be used for uh, their town office retaining wall project, we got talking about whether an upgrade to say this pump station would also be a possible, approvable, useful use of ARPA money. Um, given that that other um, fund that was available in April for residential folks who are having on-site septic issues had was immediately it was under such high demand that it got um, eaten up real quick everyone went for it um, there's a huge need for that in the state that fund became available I think maybe for, for some other federal funding that came through during COVID uh, but it uh, was very quickly eaten up and has now been closed it was going to go on to like a rolling um, approval application thing but even that has, has basically to my understanding been shut down so two rivers had said during that phone conversation about the retaining well you know this could if the town was interested be another possible use of our <coughs> funding to help you know three landowners and the town um, system get a needed upgrade and um, so that's you know certainly up to the town whether or not that funding is available for that purpose or how much of that funding might be available for that purpose or for just design and then figuring out you know there's a lot more steps that kind of need to happen before any kind of construction happens and figuring out what's the capacity of the existing pump station um, what is the permitting status of it, what upgrades would need to happen to it to add more flow to it. Um, so it's a multifaceted request. Mm -hmm. Is it in, their, in the basement of their house? or No, it's station? outside, right in the, um, so you can see the little uh, control station and alarm right across from Robert Mayer's building. It's just like a little lot that somebody, maybe him kind of gardens on. Mm -hmm. It's grassy, there's a garden. Yep. Um, it's right adjacent to the Bowen's small structure that looks unused yeah. there. That's like a little studio or something. Um, if that ever needed to hook up to sewer, this right. would be where it would go. Um, so it's on um, private land and yeah. it's just in, in the, almost in the right of way of Robinson. Well, I've seen uh, that little building flood with you know, mm. six, eight inches of water in it yeah. before. Yeah, so that's that's another thing. I was just looking at the um, the flood map. That particular pump station, I was curious about its proximity to the hundred year flood. It's it's just out there. there's a um, mapped hundred year flood, obviously for the white, and then there's a mapped um, without design flood elevations hundred year flood zone for the brook. But it's it's just outside of that, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. But it's certainly one where if you were to upgrade it. Or permit it or replace it. You'd you'd want to make sure you're yeah. you were you fit well above bit. you know with the cover, um, meet all the the floodplain rules. Uh, but it just um, <clears throat> the reason we're here basically is because Terry, his ears perked up when I started talking about that area and he said, oh that pump station that's been kind of something that has bothered him for a while. If there was any chance through this project to maybe fix that. So it sounds like in his. His mind, being the uh, the wastewater man here, that, that that's an an idea that he would approve of. Yes, that was yeah. that's. I wouldn't even be here if yeah. if Terry yeah. hadn't yeah. kind of actually introduced the idea mm -hmm. and then been in favor of it. So now, how it gets funded is certainly up to the town. Yeah. Um, well, and there would be a, would there be um, a certain amount from from you guys for funding mm -hmm. it too. I would. I would think that we're, I mean, our, our immediate concern is is trying to figure out how we're gonna, uh, you know, design and, and permit the yeah. pipe down the hill, and you know, if we can tee into our neighbor's system, and then 
that, you know, that goes on down yeah, to there. Yeah, that goes on. And that's um, the sim that's kind of the simple part. The tough part for me is if that permit if that pump station was never permitted prior, I can't. Um, yeah. It's existing now, so it kind of falls into that pseudo grandfathered state. But mm -hmm. Terry Severy is the man I go to <laughs> to say, "Hey, can we hook onto that?" Which I kind of already did. Yeah. And he basically said, "Ooh, that pump station. Yeah. We got to fix that mm -hmm. type of thing." Mm -hmm. um, can I backstep a little bit? Yeah, um, of course. What is it that failed with their existing system? The leach field? Their leach field is, is in a progressive so, state of... Um, why is it that, it, it, in my understanding, uh, an existing leach field could be removed and a new one put in its place? Is that Why is that not possible? On that particular lot, it is um, potentially possible if it... Um, is it's going to be very pricey and it, with some test bit exploration it, I may find that it may not even be possible. There's very small amount of area on their particular lot that has slopes that are suitable for an uh, on-site wastewater disposal system. There's a very small um, flat-ish area up there and all that's on the small flat-ish area is the house and a spring. And a shallow spring has a 15500 foot isolation yeah, zone around I, I it, as you know. So it, even if we could find an area, it's. Um, I always look for best fix with the existing house situation because the state does have that best fix. Um, I don't know if I could find a best fix here. So, so Burley's mine and my mind um, went, went to the municipal option because it's one of those where, um, boy, it's really shallow to live <coughs> everywhere. Um, and ledgy. Very, very ledgy, which obviously we know a lot of lots are, but and what's left for flattish area has all the infrastructure on it. So it would be drilling a new well, um, water supply, 100 feet away from where I might or might not be able to find. Mm -hmm. um, right, So it, it's good to state it for the record. Yeah. Um, I know that that Terry's not here, so it's still probably his stronger opinion on that. But um, with the larger system that would hook their home into it, uh, would there be a likelihood that there's a couple more houses up Route 100? Well, that's popped into my head as well, because 10 to 12 years ago, the previous owner of that apartment house that's mm -hmm. north of the village was having, um, as I recall, it was a long time ago, but it was. It, I think it was sewer system issues that may have since resolved or also partially water. resolved. Maybe water, he has one oh, or two springs, both, both mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, David all of the above. And I remember tentatively during that time kind of looking into the possibility of hooking that particular apartment house onto town. Now, if this pump station was um, improved, that would certainly be where that one could hook onto. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another one of those kind of like, fire waiting to happen things that you know and, and that also made me think about gosh if we were to improve this pump station for these three residences the two that are currently on it uh, the Griffiths maybe it's worth if it's in the town's best interest you know maybe it's worth designing it for five residences in case you know mm -hmm. say that studio also wanted to hook on that's on the Bowens property and maybe that apartment building, you know. It's, mm -hmm. But that that's get, certainly getting into a project that's um, outside of their funding capabilities. Um, but maybe in the town's best interest, and if there's, um, you know, if there is mon federal money available, maybe it is the time to try to attack something like that, at least at the design level, so you can figure out if it's if it's feasible, if it's worth doing, what the cost even is yeah. mm -hmm. of such a thing. And are we in an emergency situation here? Yeah, okay. no, it's, it's <laughs> as you not, know from being we're um, not married to we're someone. We're not flushing well. Yeah. No. As you know we're from being married not to not someone to who deals with that kind of stuff, it's, yeah. it's something that we can, okay. you know, so address temporarily. We can categorize it urgent. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, they're doing the best they can. But. We've done our best to limp along where instructing the kids not to flush <laughs> more than they have to yeah. and 
And that does change we'll very short and showers. Along as fast as possible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is summer, so we can, you know, hose yeah, we have southern outdoor yeah. showers. Yeah. 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 It's only fun for yeah. summer. Yeah. So is that something that I don't know who would start exploring the permitting process with the state on that? I, I could do that if. Yeah. Um, to this point, my time has just been, you know, as a good friend. But yeah. um, ideally, if it turned into a bigger project, ideally it would be something that it would be compensated. Yeah, it would be way. something we would find. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I, I, I would be inclined to worse. say start investigating. With Terry. Yeah, and see, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, and... I, you know, waiting until the next select board meeting, you know, it, it's it, under the urgent category. Um, we, we would probably want to keep this process moving along. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't want you to say, well, it's going to be two weeks before the select board meets again. We're going to talk to them. Um, whatever you discover. Oh, yeah. No, it's been goes moving with, along. Goes to Terry. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, All right. Um, so the po um, at the formal request level, then what might be available for design funding I, I can work through with Joan or... Um, yeah, it'd be nice to know. I mean, there is this could... I don't know if this falls under the... I'm throwing everything at ARPA now, but you know, at least for some... <laughs> well, Two Rivers, things. that was... The, they said this is exactly what ARPA's for was yeah. the response I got, but um, that's not my decision to make, so... Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess it'd be good to... Um, investigate what other options are are out there you know but i guess that would be something that joan could look into okay but but yeah we might as well start the um you know investigating what what the process what's going to be needed and then that'll um kind of unfold what kind of money we're talking about yeah okay yeah okay but meanwhile there's um two bathrooms in this room <laughs> if you guys need to go and the hardware yeah, yeah. Hardware. yeah. There's a porta potty on the park. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Um, Free shelter. Yeah. Well, now's the time to do it. You don't want to be having this conversation in We'd December. Like to be in the middle of the winter. Yeah. yeah. It was. Uh, yeah. I mean, never great timing for that, but it at was least it's perfect not. timing. <laughs> the, the ground had thawed. Well, it was yeah. perfect yeah. timing. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. The things we learned. All right. Thank you. Um, to be continued, I guess. Yeah. Um, is Michaela on Zoom? Um, she's not on Zoom, but I'm acting as Michaela. Okay. If I could, please. Yeah. We're talking about the uh, softball tournament that left so many people limping around town <laughs> after the last one. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Don't remind them. So she is requesting um, to host a softball tournament for eighteen for people eighteen years and older. Um, play at your own risk on Saturday, July 2nd, beginning at 9 in the morning, going until she's not sure yet, at the Rochester softball field. Um, she has a couple of requests this year. She would like to request a clean porter potty down by the tennis courts. And um, this year, um, she's still working out some of the details, but they are going. They would like to suggest an entry fee for each team of one hundred and fifty dollars to go towards the field maintenance that they would like to do um, to improve the safety of the field. And she's also looking to see if we can get permission to do field upgrades. Um, they would like to turn it all up and roll it all out. Um, using the funds that people pay to register their team. And then she said that the remaining funds would be used to a fundraiser towards skate space. Cool. Um, on top of that, she also wanted to add um, thoughts on food vendors, like if it would be possible to have, to allow people to come down um, with food. She was kind of thinking like maybe Julie mm -hmm. um, with her little yeah. thing. Um, and so that's it. And if it's approved, um, she would like to, she has an advertisement flyer that she's created um, with the rules and then a registration form that goes along with it that she would put out there if it's approved. Mm -hmm. And that's it. I would like to footnote that request and see if we could um, allow it to be named the 
since he is the uh, the founding father of the, the concept last year, along with Harv. Yeah. So, um, just a small No, I, um, that's a good idea. So, can you tell me, what does that mean um, to turn up and roll out? Um, I don't really know. It's kind of like she said, it needs to be turn up. She was hoping to ask Charlie Smith with his Harley break mm -hmm. thing, and then have it rolled by Ray Harvey. Apparently she's spoken to these two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Or just to smooth the surface. Yeah, because there was like quite a few whole like divots in the ground where mm -hmm. people fell and I mean it was funny for those of us watching, but I guess not when you were playing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I I don't have any problems with it. It sounds fun to have fun. It was fun last year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, we need to make a formal um, approval of that. Frank also. Frank, how do you feel about yeah. it? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> I saw you sleeping. But I'm asleep, almost. <laughs> All right. well, Frank, I'm you, okay with it. When, when you vote for something, you're supposed to say your name when you're on Zoom. <laughs> Frank, okay. so very high Frank. Here I am, okay, in the so kitchen. Don't <laughs> I move to approve the uh, softball, the Tim Pratt Memorial Softball Tournament on July 2nd. Second. I second it. No in favor? Aye. aye. Frank says aye. Frank says aye. <laughs> All righty. Thank you. Okay, Great. I will Thank you. I can't love with that. Yeah. Thank cool. you very much. Yeah. Welcome. Um, so we also have a... Um, park use application for the use of the new park for the 100 on 100 relay race, not on June 20th. <laughs> um, yeah. well, wait a second. On, um, that's on Sorry. August. Kind of the first thing on the agenda being moved down a couple notches, Martha. So, um, I'm not seeing it. You're not seeing it? It's the first under, thing under new business. Under new business. That we, we did not talk about yet. Oh, oh, okay. But I thought that was the one we just had the name wrong. I thought that was the one that Todd was talking about. No, no. no. It ended up we had yeah, two. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Pardon me. Yep. Yeah. So, um, I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Frank says aye. Frank says and what aye. was the date on that again? I'm sorry. August, August 13th. Okay, thank you. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. And we already talked about the request to hook up to the town water system and then the softball tournament is on the... to the fire department for June 25th. Um, yep. Um, so we have another park use application for the fire department to use the new park on June 25th for a fundraiser for Eric Bellinger, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think that's great that we have two parks that we can host two major events at the same time in town here. Yeah, so I'd, I'd move to approve that. I second it. Yeah, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Frank says aye. Frank says aye. All right, thank you. <laughs> and um, that. Um, Okay, we have the um, the new contract for the Windsor County Sheriff's Department Law Enforcement Services, and this is going to be with the uh, um, modified scheduling. I think it's the ten hours or something. Yep. Eight yep. Hours. Yeah. The Sheriff's Department shall provide to the town fully equipped and trained deputy sheriffs for the purpose of satisfying law enforcement needs within the town, and these services shall be provided in patrols for eight hours per week, consisting of a minimum duration of four hours each patrol. The patrol shall be scheduled by the Sheriff's Department with the approval of the town, and I move to approve this contract. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Frank says aye. Frank says aye. Two shifts. Two uh, shifts. Two shifts. Yeah. Yeah. From three yeah. to two. Yep. Yeah. 
So this will be here for you to sign at your leisure when you can come in, Frank. Yep, I'll do that. So um, we've got um, something here from the State of Vermont Department of Forest, Parks and Recreation um, about the uh, reappointment of the town forest fire warden. And um, it's expiring on June 30th of 2022 and he's recommending that our current warden be reappointed for a period of five years. And that is Ray Harvey. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Frank says aye. All right. <laughs> There's a one for you to sign on that one there. All right. Chugging through. Hey, there's another um, park use application <laughs> must be summertime <laughs> um, and this is from the rochester public library and this would be on from 3 30 to 4 30 on fridays ranging from um, 6 3 through 10 7 and uh, stories in the park stories games and crafts for children all free uh, i think they did this last year and it didn't end up being any any trouble and people enjoyed it so I'd, I'd move to approve that use um soon it's at, it's at the same time and dates as, as a farmer's market too so it worked out really well right. it worked out well yeah all in favor aye aye frank says aye okay um, Um, yeah, he's going to, we're getting there. Um, next on the agenda, we have a liquor license for the um, reopening of the, the um, facility at the White River Golf Club. And um, Tony Page is the applicant. And this is um, on the premises clubhouse of the White River Golf Club, first floor building, including the attached deck. And um, I believe that they also give an exception for golf courses to allow um, out on the course. So. Yeah, that's so noted there. Yep, so noted. So I'd um, move to approve. All in favor? Oh, I need a second. Good timing. Just about I can go. second it. Yep. All right. Frank can second it. Frank seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Hi, Tony. How are you? <laughs> Frank says aye. All right. Okay. Yeah, um, your roof. <laughs> like you're going you like it. You walk in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Lunch. So is this something that you need to finish out and signing? Yep, but it will need all of your all of us in here, so signatures as well. All right, all of us or can two or out of the three do it? Two out of the three can. Okay. okay. Yeah. Because yep. Tony needs to run this down pretty quick. Tomorrow. Yeah. Early. So your first day is on Saturday. A little panicked. Total membership that my first person already. Say so three started. members get two of those. Just passing the start. Just say two. Yeah. And you'll funny. sign that one. Okay. She didn't quit. She just isn't available for three more weeks. Oh, well, she didn't quit. She postponed. So are you hoping to be open for Memorial Day? Yes. Today's the 25th. Are, are oh. you doing all the cooking? Uh, I have Elizabeth, my youngest, who's going to do some training. Okay. But yeah, between, it's going to be mostly me. 
I heard Bill Carrion's in town. He's cooking over at Tozer's. That's a park you set for kids for the farmer's market? Jen turned it in, but. Yep. That was just the one she spot? Yep. She's not in there. Yep, yep. All right. Um, is that all you need? Can I think he needs that. Do you have yeah. what you need out of it? Uh, um, let me just check and see. Okay. I was hoping Bill was going to give me the bailout, but Hozier's needs a bailout too, so. <laughs> but everybody needs a bailout. It's really hard to find help right now. Maybe Dune will get Dylan up. Uh, ah. no, no. He's got a lot of memories of that place. Yeah. <laughs> so um, there is yet a, um, another park use application. Here we go. Yeah, for um, application on behalf of the farmer's market on Fridays, May 27th through August 7th. And um, I'd move to approve. There's no one here to talk about it. I think there uh, would... I'm assuming they would keep the format that they used before that tend to spread the wear across right now. Yes, Frank, do you have any further information about how they're going to set up? I I think she was in what a tour a bit, maybe a month ago. She just never yeah. filled out an application. And this was okay. just a, a formal application that she filled out, but she was going to put it in the same place as, as I recall as she did last year. Yeah. That's good. I think it yeah. was okay for us at the time. So, yeah. 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 Yes, I move to approve. Okay. I second it. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good Frank day. says aye. Okay. Thanks, Tony. Good time. See you guys later. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. See you later. Okay. And then we have um, request to authorize building reserve expenditure. And this is. Um, transfer funds from the town building reserve into the general fund to pay James Harvey for work that he's done on this building here of nine, $931.59. Yeah, and it's great that he could jump on that and, and do it. It's mm -hmm. looking good. So I'd move to approve that second transfer. It quickly. All in favor? Aye. 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 Frank says aye. aye. Excuse me, Dune, did I understand you correctly that it was for work done on the town office building? Yes. Correct. Okay, yes. Thank you. So we found some rotten clabbers that needed to be replaced before it got painted. And when they installed the generator, there was some uh, bad spot there along that railing that we had to replace some of that behind the railing and tear the railing off. So it turned out to be a little more work than what we originally thought. All right, so we have a um, little discussion about the sidewalk paving that's um, ranging from the old fire station to School Street. And that was right along where they'd been um, tearing up the street doing the new storm drain, in which case they um, dislodged some of the granite curbing. In fact, one wouldn't set down um, flush because the catch basin is bigger and more robust than the original <laughs> one. And, um, and we've got um, the folks that were doing the work are willing to, um, they gave us a quote for what was it, $26,000 I believe, to reset the curbing and excavate the old um, sidewalk and um, put down some gravel and tamp it and repave that and I'm feeling that since that is kind of a triggered by the the damage done to it by the paving that we can just go ahead and and, and execute that contract without having to do our normal procurement process there is some other paving in town sidewalk paving that we will put out to bid and follow the process. But in this situation, I think that we're justified to go ahead and take advantage of the fact that they're right there and willing to do it. So before the paving. And we have a contract that it will be no more than this is a set price. Right, right. And um, I'm thinking that this is uh, the perfect application of some of the ARPA funds because it's for the public to move safely outside 
Yep. So it's going to the fire station or the old that, fire station, the old or fire it's station. not going further no, down. No, it's not going the, further down. It's basically a, addressing that section that has the granite curbing right there in front of the those granite few buildings area. there, which yeah. is and it's been a liability. The the, the pavement has been horrible. Yeah. yeah, he would have told you that. Yeah. Are they aware that of the ADA compliant? I believe the sidewalk needs to be four feet wide. So as long as it's ADA compliant as well, so we don't have to rip it up, redo it, because it's not wide enough. Frank, are you aware of that? Yeah, the, that's what the bid is for, four foot wide. Perfect. Yeah, and that included? Um, that is, that's included the four foot wide, and um, he's 12 inches of gravel tamped in and repaving, straightening the curbing and doing whatever and, um, paving he has to do there. And then dealing with the lawns because those lawns, um, the topography, they drop right into the sidewalk. So it's mm. going to have to re-sculpt their lawns a little bit. So what about the snow yep. piles, the, the snow blower, whatever they use? Is that going to fit on that? Oh, yeah, because this is... Um, it's going to get wider. Yeah, it's going to be four foot standard. Yeah. It's going to be wider. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 48 inches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it has to be for wheelchair accessibility. But four feet is most snow blowers are. Well, the one that the less. one that he bought to use was thirty six or so. Is that, I'm not sure. But it was um, he was able to do it now without totally destroying the little stone wall along there. So that's going to have to get reworked, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, it should be. I don't think it's going to be. Now he'll do two passes. I'm going to do two passes, right? So um, I move to approve. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Frank says aye. Frank says aye. All right. Oh, um, we have another park use application. Look at that. <laughs> for Pierce well, Hall. Wait. On the 4th of July <laughs> for the traditional chicken barbecue and raffle. Um, so we all know that's a good time. So I'd, I'd move to approve that one. I second it. All in favor? Aye. aye. Frank says aye. Well, wait. <laughs> one of these days, I'm not going to say aye. I know. <laughs> <laughs> For the next one. <laughs> um, all right. We got. Um, um, there's another park use application for Pierce Hall for the Ice Cream Social and Historic Car Show on 626. That's the day after the, um, the busy 25th. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be a very busy weekend. Um, I would move to approve yet another park use application. Yes, we had this last year as well. I yep, yep, okay. yep. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Frank says aye. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay, and um, we come down to um, asking the select board to approve going forward with an environmental study of the high school property in conjunction with the Rochester, the RSUD. Rochester School Unified District. No, is that what is it? Rochester Stockbridge. That's, that's, that's Rochester me. Stockbridge. I'm sorry, Stockbridge. I didn't mean to bogart your ass. Hi, yeah. that's me, Catherine Shankman. All right. So um, I'm not coming on on video because I want to I want to make sure that I am giving you all the right and pertinent information to to make this decision. So I'm gonna read, all right? And I'm first gonna start out by last Friday on the 19th of May, uh, Vic Roboto and I, as co-chairs of the repurposing committee, the high school repurposing committee, met by Zoom with Sarah Wright of Two Rivers, Ottaquichi, and Erica Hoffman Keis, the executive director of Green Mountain Economic Development Corporation to review what needs to happen in order to meet state and federal environmental requirements in order to be eligible for government grants to develop the property and to avoid legal liability for existing environmental contamination of the property. 
So why is it that this just came to our attention now? You all know that uh, we, on, on behalf of the town, put an application into Senator Sanders for congressionally directed spending requests, and that um, we've been uh, uh, receiving significant support from Senator Sanders and his committee. Mm -hmm. And so I contacted Josh. I contact. I tried to contact everybody, including all the select board members, just to basically give them a heads up about this. I also spoke to Josh Hanford, who said, did you do the NEPA? And I said, no, I don't even know what the NEPA is. It turns out that's the National Environmental uh, Proaction Act. He said, well, in order to qualify for federal money, you have to get this process started. And I said, okay. Uh, and that basically put us in the stage where we are right now. Uh, back to Two Rivers and talking about the whole uh, process for environmental uh, assessment of the school property. Because certainly if we're going to be given a good chunk of money uh, for, the, for the federal government, we want to be able to qualify for that. So we have been in the process of learning about what that means. Because when the property changes ownership, the responsibility and liability for mitigation of the environment, uh, environmental contaminants transfers with the ownership. So this process has to start before the property is acquired. So there are two separate state and federal liabilities that go with contamination. There's also a separate phase, uh, uh, phase one at, for, the, at, for the state process and phase two uh, for uh, the federal process. And they are a little different but they work in parallel. These, this, the NEPA can work in, in parallel with the Brownfields Reuse and Environmental Liability a Limitation, which is for short called BRELLA. So um, Two Rivers is qualified and prepared to assist with projects like ours with meeting the BRELLA requirements, and at least for part of the NEPA program. And the NEPA program is is a broader research, not just the actual environmental uh, contaminants and whatever, but it, did, it goes into historical um, aspects of the property and things like that. So I think that, uh, that Victoria actually started us with the NEPA when we uh, applied for the feasibility study. And I've been waiting for Sarah to get back with me with exactly what Victoria did in that regard. So as I said, once the, the potential buyer, which in this case, we're hoping is, um, oh, the potential buyer, the Rochester Select Board in this case, right, advises Two Rivers of its desire to participate in the Brella. The Two Rivers staff, Sarah Wright in this particular case, will file an application on the town's behalf to receive state approval that the site is eligible for eventual enrollment in the Brella program. The current owner, which is the, um, the Rochester Stockbridge Unified School District must give permission for the site to be assessed for contamination. And once the application is submitted, it typically takes three to four weeks for a state decision in, on eligibility. And that's basically what we're asking right now, the town to go forward with, to, to engage Two Rivers so that they can file this application on the town's behalf to receive state approval um, that the site is eligible for the enrollment. And we do need the school board to you know, give the okay for that. The following an affirmative state decision on site eligibility, the next step is for the town to ask Two Rivers to undertake a phase one brownfield assessment. This is essentially a desk audit in which a search is conducted for any existing documentation of contamination or potential, or potential uh, contamination of the property whether the documents are in the possession of the owner or of governmental agencies. Technically, after uh, the phase one document phase, the town could go ahead and vote for uh, acquisition of the property without having any penalty. But there are reasons for the town to actually go through phase one and phase two uh, mm -hmm. before uh, the, the vote uh, is made. and. Mm -hmm go into that. So the cost of phase one is approximately $3,500 uh, for which Two Rivers has grant funds available. 
And this process takes about a month to complete and to produce a report, which is submitted to the Vermont Agency of Natural Resources, ANR. It then takes about another month to receive state acknowledgement that the report has been completed. When completed, phase one provides relief from federal legal liability for contamination. Phase one must be completed within six months prior to property acquisition. If acquisition is delayed and occurs more than six months after phase one, then phase one can be repeated and updated at a later date. Upon completion of phase one, the town, just as I said, can apply for participation in the Brella program and enter into phase two of the Brownfield assessment. Step one of, of phase two is creation of a work plan for the on-site physical assessment for contamination, where, uh, e.g., where, where to drill the holes in the building, how many pressure testing of the underground oil tank, uh, where to drill the holes in the ground, and other sampling methods to find and quantify contaminants. Two Rivers can assist with the selection of a qualified consultant to do this work, which would cost between four and $5,000 and take about two months. Two Rivers can probably obtain funding for it. Step two of the phase two is the actual physical sampling to be conducted by qualified contractors. And Sarah advises that the time and cost required can vary depending on the specific site and level of contamination. Not knowing the high school that well, she guessed it might take three to four months to complete at a cost of thirty to $35,000. The state will monitor this process and could require additional sampling beyond the work plan, which would add to the cost and time required. There are governmental grant funds available and would need to be applied for. And she was pretty confident that, that all of that would be taken care of, the cost of all of this. The, uh, the completion, the competition for contractors could also uh, lengthen the timeline. Apparently that's one of the biggest issues is the availability of contractors. With completion of phase two, the buyer, i.e. the town, would have a clear picture of the property contamination and what it might cost to clean it up should they vote to acquire. The town could either proceed with acquisition or decline to buy the property at this point with no obligation whatsoever to, to, to do any remediation. If it acquires the property, it is required to clean it up. If it declines, then the seller, who would be the school board, would be required to do the cleanup of the site. There are government funds available to pay for the cleanup. So the NEVA process is a similar to the Brella process in some ways, but broader in scope, review for the presence of archeological and historic aspects to the site, and the process may have begun and or partially been completed by two rivers. This is repeating what I, what I you know, sort of ad-libbed. And so Sarah is going to do the research to find this out. Therefore, it will take about nine months and maybe longer for the town to be able to make an informed decision about whether to acquire the property or not, as far as environmental contamination is concerned. And so um, anyway, here we are tonight. And... Sorry for my reading, but as you can see, it's complicated and I just didn't want to trust my memory that I, I wanted to put it down as I heard it, as it was told to us. So what we're coming to tonight is, is to actually ask the town to proceed with the request of Two Rivers to, you know, to file the application to the state to make us go forward and the state will then get back to us saying whether we whether the site is eligible. And, and, I, and quite frankly, you know, the school is okay. in yeah. the, the school is in Rochester. So I wouldn't I wouldn't know why we wouldn't want to know all the information about that site as as you know, as the town. Well, it's obvious that in, in the, as we approach a final decision by the voters of the town about um, whether or not to buy that property, this is uh, critical information that we need to do it. So it seems to me a no brainer that we have to make this request to Two Rivers to, to initiate this um, process. Yes, I mean, in going forward at all in our investigative era yeah. of <laughs> yeah. the coming years, um, we have to continue on yeah, with this. Yeah. Um, for the, the only issue I have as a 
as a member of the board is I don't want this to fall in our lap. Any of this. That's why I don't think vote. that's right. I think yeah. if you guys are really heavily want to pursue this and there's a lot of legwork to be done, I don't want it thrown on the select board. Well, we understand that the select board is doing the business of the town and the school board is doing the business of education. We understand that clearly. And we have been asked to pursue uh, you know, all of the uh, options regarding the high school and we're steadily working at that. Um, so we, we get that, Frank. Um, and certainly, you know, the town would want to have as much information as possible. So, you know, we've just written a second major grant and uh, the first grant was, was awarded and we're in the feasibility study phase. Uh, which is, is on its way to conclusion, but we're in the next phase. We, we applied for Senator Sanders. You know, the whole Senator Sanders grant, Senator Sanders has funded our project, but now it has gone to the next hurdle. It, it's gone from his office to the, the federal, the, the, the Congressional Appropriations Committee. So there's gonna be a whole, you know, other kind of interrogation process that will go on as we go through that process too. So that's why we're not naming any amount of money right now uh, in any kind of public way because we, don't, we wanna manage expectations and not go on the record that, hey, we've got X amount of money, but because we still have to have approval from the Congress. Right, but, but regardless, yeah, of the, regardless of the money that, that could be coming down the line, this, this whole process I see is necessary just to make the informed decision on the town about whether or not to, what we'd be getting into. Absolutely. I'm, I'm surprised Absolutely. that the original um, um, feasibility study didn't, uh, didn't include this point. Um, and I asked that, I asked that of the consultant, Peter, and he had assumed it had already been completed. So that's why we got to the stage where we are because nobody had ever mentioned yeah. that to me not from Two Rivers or anybody who had been advising on, on this. So we're, you know, this is this is the first time I've ever worked on such a project as this, uh, this size, and I'm learning a lot as I go along, but I do believe that we have tremendous support uh, from significant agencies, and now we have uh, the support of, of one of our state senators going forward. So we're in a good place. I understand what Frank's saying, I understand, you know, the responsibility that we've taken on uh, because I'm the one who's doing a lot of the grant writing. So, yeah, I mean, Two Rivers is there to support us through the process. Why not? You know, why would we not do this? Well, it's. Um, I guess I it, guess it, I went on to the like standard. I, 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 yeah, I think we have the information. It did. It's, it's <clears> not sounding like. We're incurring any any cost to the town at this point to um, to move forward. They have the Two Rivers has got funding to to do these kinds of studies. So I, I think it's you know we have to you know this is a pretty easy step and, and a necessary step to take. I think the, the the point the underlying point is that the timing of the environmental study does bring us through another winter. Oh yeah. So that, that would be the only point if, if there's funding to support the building throughout the winter, upcoming winter, um, they are uh, doing a lot of analysis on what it costs to sustain the building last winter, mm -hmm. which was a cold winter, mm -hmm. um, the, the actual cost. They, they weren't able to really put their finger on it, but I understand yeah. that Robert Mayer uh, rolled up his sleeves with mm -hmm. Tara and um, they got down to the nitty gritty on it. So those numbers will be coming out and then it'll be determined what will be necessary to support the building one more winter. Mm -hmm. because and, that, and the reason, and the reason yeah. there was some confusion on that is because that $15,000 figure was, was not, did not represent the Stockbridge portion of the heat, which was the agreement, the condition uh on that school board meeting back in september 2021 so 
and that was something that didn't get translated to Terra. So we're trying to figure out what the actual Stockbridge portion of the school energy costs were, which is what Rochester is liable to pay or agreed to pay. We still don't have that figure. Uh, and I will support that in the future. I'm paying for that without ownership. And I'm not going to go through that. The school owns that building. And they should be the ones that keep it up, not the town of Rochester. I'm sorry, but that's the way I feel. And I don't think it's right that the voters of this community have to put up with that. The school owns that building and they need to heat it and fund it. And if they don't, then I don't know why we want to do that. That just doesn't make any sense to me. I'm sorry, but that's the way I feel. I know that's the way you feel. Well, that's the way you feel now uh, because you did. That's the way I'm going to feel, Catherine. That you did approve of that. That five dollar oil, you're going to see a major increase in cost in trying to keep that building mm -hmm. alive. I understand. I understand the concern that of what we're dealing with right now with inflation, and the pandemic, Frank. It's a real consideration. I understand that. We've also been told that if you shutter that building and turn off the heat and the power that you will heave the foundation and destroy it. And then we'll have, you know, a 33,000 foot square foot mess on our hands in the middle of the town. It's gonna to cost you a million dollars to tear it down. So one way or the other, if you, if you don't understand what, what we're doing, I mean, the whole reason that the school has decided they don't want that building anymore. And we're, you know, in the feasibility study to give the voters uh, of Rochester the information they need to vote to acquire the building. And so the whole conditions were met to allow the, you know, the, the consultants to have access to the building throughout the, the duration of the feasibility study. As this process has uh, unfolded, we have discovered more and more, you know, like the, the whole environment, the need to have the environmental assessment before acquisition. And as we delved more deeply into the environmental assessment, it's absolutely in the town's best interest to know everything about the property before they acquire it, of course. Or, or not, yeah, yep. Or not, that's right. So the, right. That, that, that vote, so, you know, uh, it, it is what it is, Frank. And, and I there realize are, that, there Catherine, support, but I, a, it's the schools. It's not the town of Rochester's. And I, we pay enough in our school taxes to support that building. And if they don't want to heat it for the winter, that's their issue. Because if it does a lot of damage and the town finally does decide to buy it, they're responsible for that damage. So, 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 um, so, I, so think, yeah. I think we need to play hardball with them and say, you know, if you want to, however you want to market this building, you market it the way you want to, but you have to maintain it. And that's just the way it should be. I'm not arguing with you, Frank. All I am is the middle guy here because I'm not a decider. We have been working for, as you know, a long time to, at, in addition to some of us having full-time jobs to try to come to some sort of completion and understanding of the potential of the building. I am not arguing with you. I did not make the condition. That was a condition made by the school board. What I said to the school board when I gave them a more modified version of all this because I didn't have, haven't had the, the full meeting with Sarah and Erica yet, was that I would hope that, that at this point going forward, that we could work in partnership, the two deciding boards could work in partnership to, to reach a goal that would be of mutual benefit to both sides. Right, and so that's what I mean, instead um, of just, the idea of playing hardball, I would like people to actually talk to each other about their concerns and to say, look, let's work together to make this happen. So for the town to, have, and I understand we are, we are the second of a two town uh, uh, school district and we're the larger portion of that school district, right? So we're already paying with our school taxes. Frank makes a very good and valid point. One that I've also made, you know? Yeah, so that's 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 not the um, that's not the issue at hand it's not right the issue now. We're talking yeah, about, really. it's not. Yeah, that's gonna but, that's that's, but it's coming. It's it's it'll that'll be 
coming up, I'm sure. And, um, you know, we made the decision to uh, maybe, you know, a little quickly, but in an effort to uh, appease the Stockbridge School contingency of the school to um, and, and a, a show of good faith. And that was a one year commitment to cough up some money to help you know, keep the building in a stable place. That's, you know, that's a future decision going forward. And it is the school board's building. And the, um, I don't know if they can, you know, if they can even legally just let the building go to hell by, you know, deciding not to heat it. So, but our, our decision tonight is whether we're going to ask Two Rivers to move forward on our behalf to, to, start the studies for the environmental concerns and this may um you know the the heating the building may be the the least of our concerns depending on what what shows up in in these studies so i um <clears throat> you know i think that um i i would move to approve the the request to two rivers to to initiate the the process of getting the phase one study done and I'll make a comment before I second. Yeah. Um, in from my point of view, this environmental study is something that falls within the camp of the school. Mm. In order for them to transfer ownership, this is supposed to be done. So therefore, it, it should be done by the school. But Catherine's right. The school is in the business of educating students. Um, so. It is in our better interest to walk through this process and we would get the results and we would ask the questions that we need to know mm -hmm. if we're the one instituting this. If the school is doing it, it's, it's just haphazardly gonna get done and probably take a lot longer. So it is in our better interest to be the one to institute it, even though I believe that the school should be the one doing this before transferring ownership to us. Um, but that said, I think that uh, there's a school board meeting tomorrow night, a special school board meeting that this is on their agenda. So in order to expedite this a little bit quicker, um, I second the motion. Yeah. I just want to add to something you said. Yeah. I don't, you're in the middle of discussing the vote, so I'll wait till after you vote. Yeah. I just second it. Yeah, so. she just second it. So all in favor? Aye. I'll say aye. I abstain. Okay. Because I wanted to just comment on it and before it was voted, but that's okay. I abstain. Okay, let's go on. All right. I just uh, wanted to add then, if I could, Dune, something that Patty said, and maybe because I read it was less clear, but the town, the town can go through phase one and phase two and vote not to acquire the building with no right. obligation towards making any any remediation uh, 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 you know, effort. So I don't think there's a risk to the town, do you, Patty? No, because uh, once, once the building is identified with any deficit at all, someone has to fix it. So if we see that the building has millions of dollars worth of uh, problems that need to be remedied, we can decide not to accept the building and the school at that point would have to remediate those problems. So yeah. uh, entering into the study guarantees that that building, if it has any sickness or lead or oil leakage or any asbestos, it guarantees us that that building will end up being a healthy, secure building. So we will at least, at the very least, end up with a high school that is a good, strong, safe building. Well, and to speak to um, Frank, referring to wanting to play hardball, this in a way is throwing that, is this, you know, what we're paying, we're, well, we're not paying, what we're asking for Two Rivers to pay for and these studies <laughs> and, and other grant money for is is in a way playing hardball because we're going to find out what the school is offering us and then if this information comes out that it's like there's big problems here that's um it forces them to to um to deal with it mm -hmm. 
So Frank, I'd like to hear what comment you wanted to make before the vote. I didn't mean to. I just, I just want to say that, you know, we're responsible for the town's money. So I think that's our obligation. It's not to this project. It's not to anything else. It's to the taxpayer of the community. And that's what we have to be responsible for. And, and you can spout all these free money things all you want to, but there's a hidden cost in back of those and everybody knows it. So in order, if we keep digging, you're gonna find more, more things to go wrong and also more money to spend. And I think we have to be very careful as a select board going forward that we are being pretty careful with the town's money here. That's all I'd say, dude. All right. All right. All right. Um, so that's um, that's that. Um, Joan, are you on online tonight? I'm here. Yep. Uh, what have What have you got for us tonight? Uh, um, I have a summary of the discussion is about uh, whether the town wants to discontinue a section of Bingo Road uh, beyond where a gate would be installed um, and let the Forest Service, which owns the land uh, on either side of the existing road beyond that gate to uh, essentially uh, take over the portion that's under the road. So Frank asked me to do a little research on what, it, what the process is for discontinuing a road. Um, so far, what I've done is uh, read the state statutes with regards to it, and it's a little, um, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll run through it with you and then uh, let you know that the thing I need to do next is get sort of a plain language, step one, step two, step three, uh, hopefully from uh, Two Rivers um, might be able to help me do that. So it's really clear exactly what the town needs to do to continue that road if that's what you decide you want to do. Um, so it's Title Nine Highways, uh, the state statutes, Chapter Seven uh, covers the laying out, the discontinuing, and the reclassification of highways. What the process is, um, voters or landowners in the town, if there's at least five percent of them of the voters, uh, can petition the select board to take that kind of action, or the select board itself can choose to take an action. Um, in this case, it would be to initiate proceedings to uh, discontinue a section of Bingo, Bingo Road. Um, first, what the select board has to do is set a time and a day to what they call examine the premises, which I believe basically is a site visit to just go out there and discuss and agree on where it is that you want to start this discontinuous discontinuation to start and what it looks like, um, who the landowners are there and what the condition of the road is now and anything else that's relevant. Um, and then from there, um, the select board, uh, if they decide to move ahead, you give notice to the planning board, post a notice in the town clerk's office and publish a notice in the paper, not less than uh, 10 days before you have set a time and a date for a public hearing on the matter. Um, and also uh, notice some of these things don't apply in this particular situation, but I'm just going through them anyway. Um, you have to send a notice by certified mail to any property owner who might be affected by the discontinuance of the road. In this case, I understand that it's only forest service ownership beyond where we want to might want to discontinue. Um, but I guess uh, to follow all the steps, you'd have to notify the forest services that uh, this is something you're um, interested in doing. Um, and then the select board's decision, essentially you're charged with determining whether the discontinuance would serve the public good, that it's a necessity and or it's a convenience of the town uh, to throw up this section of road. Um, you'd have to be able to either find in the records what the meets and bounds are of the roads are currently. And if you don't have record of that, um, you would have to have a survey done to show exactly where those meets and bounds are. And then within 60 days of the completion of the examination and the hearing having been held, 
uh, the select board reports your findings to the public and to all interested parties. And then you vote to discontinue if that's what you decide to do. Um, and then that decision gets recorded in the town records. Um, if there's anything else that's relevant here. Uh, if, this, if the road happens, that's going to be discontinued, happens to be the sole access to somebody's property beyond the point where it's closed. You have to find a way to uh, compensate them for that loss. Or uh, usually what's done is that you allow them to have a permanent right of way, which gives them access to their property. I don't know that there's any private ownerships beyond that point. I think it's all service land. I have no idea what we're talking about. No. Why are we giving up part of Bingo Road? Maybe it uh, be best for Frank to... Um, I met with uh, Chris Matrick there a week or so ago, and we went up to Bingo. They put a gate up near the end on our part of the road, and basically it's way at the end where it enters, where it splits. I know where it is, and I know it's in the wrong spot. Uh, not according to them, and I'm not going to argue with where the gate is, but... The idea is, why are we even keeping it? It's nine tenths of a mile up there. The only landowner is the U.S. Forest Service. We're going to have to maintain it for the next, oh, five years anyway, while they're logging up there during the winter. The road is going to need re-graveling. It's going to need to be ditched, re-ditched, and, and probably stone-lined in places. And there's anywhere from 12 to 15 culverts up through there and one bridge and it goes to absolutely nowhere it doesn't service anybody and it's just the forest service that's it and if we go up beyond harlands there a little ways past the the two camps there that are on the left and there's a third one across the brook and you'll see uh where the the boundary line comes across the road there and you go a little bit further up the hill and there's a turnout right there. And we look, John has looked at it and thought if it could be a little bigger, we could turn the truck around there and get rid of that road going up so we don't have to maintain it in the winter. And it's, and over the years, probably the last 50 years, I don't think we've ever had to maintain that because nobody logged up in there for quite a number of years. So we haven't had to do anything with it during the winter, we've turned around right there at Pine Gap Road, which, you know, made it good for the skiers and everything to do the loop. So I'm, I just don't see why we need to continue to own it. And talking with Chris, he was going to look and see and what the government would require. And I tried to get a hold of him today, but I couldn't. So I, I think it's in our interest to look at it and maybe make a decision on it. And if you do have time, drive up through there and see what I'm talking about. And uh, it's not going to affect anybody. We have no taxpayers above there and it's nine tenths of a mile. And I don't think we get hardly any money as far as from the state for having a class three road that nobody uses. And if we wind up having to put a lot of money into it, I don't know what for, you know, because it doesn't serve anybody. Okay, well, that was my next question. How much state funding would be lost by giving up this nine tenths of a mile? According to John, it, it's right around a thousand bucks a year is okay. what he figured anyway. I don't know how he figured it. He just spouted it off. And as for the culverts and the ditching, we would have to Culverts and the ditching, we would have, that's a hydrologically connected road. So we would have funding through the Clean Water, the Clean Water Act to, to perform that maintenance that you say is needed. That's true. Okay. Just needed to have all this information. Yep, no problem. But I don't know. Pat, I don't know what Chris is going to recommend, what the government does on these situations either. And he wasn't sure. He was going to look into it so we could form a consensus. Because they would still, I would think they would still maintain that as a road for access to their property up there. Well, they'd probably treat it like they do the ends roads anyway, doing they, they gate them off in the, you know, during the season there during the winter time and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so that's how they'd use it they just 
they just own more road there. They just, you know, have a gate down lower. That's all. Does it serve uh, Kristen and the, the people up there? Is that the road that? Um, well, in the summertime, they use it. They go up They there. go up there in the summertime. Mm -hmm. but, that's, uh, but they're already um, on Forest Service Road to, to, you know, to get up past that four-way intersection. So it's, um, but there would be somebody to notify. There is a private landowner up that way. But it's not off of our road. It, that's it's off of at that point. It's off of the Thresher Hill. Thresher Hill, which is Forest Service Road. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's um, definitely um, worth looking at and talking about. I don't definitely not making a decision tonight about it, but it's good. Um, Anything else from Joan? Um, yeah, what else, um, Joan, what else you got? Uh, I assume you saw my email that we did get uh, some funds from FEMA. Mm -hmm. Thank you. More to come. What uh, were those for, Joan? Sorry? What were the funds from FEMA for? 2019 storm. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, and more to come, the final category that I'm compiling now is for uh, what they call category Z, which is the administrative cost, which is um, essentially my time uh, to do the FEMA work since the storm hit. Uh, so I'm putting together all of my time cheats starting in April 2019 through today um, to see what that's up to. They've allocated $25,000 and change for that, and I have no idea how that'll add up, but we will get reimbursed at least some, possibly all of my time uh, for the FEMA work. That'd be good. Thank you. Um, is that it for now? Yeah, it's all for now. We don't have anybody from the library here tonight, unless they're on Zoom. Mm -hmm. Nope. Um, we were just kind of talking about highway issue, and um, there's nothing other than that on the um, Terry. We did talk about utilities a little bit, even though he's not here. Um, is Jeff Gephardt here? Is the energy? Nope, nope. Um, and um, for um, I have one thing that I, I think that we should. Why don't we? set a meeting to invite the public to come and give us their um, thoughts about um, the Arpa. dwindling supply of ARPA money <laughs> mm -hmm. before we spend it all. Um, we, we've mentioned that we would, and, and people have been bringing us suggestions like Susie and the, the you know, mm -hmm. um, dog feces collection stations. Um, so, what do you think? What's your fancy? Is this something I we think would we should do? stay away from June twenty fifth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Is this something? The town just can't take it. <laughs> I agree with that. Do we do we want to uh, make it as a separate meeting in front of a select board meeting just to keep our schedules from getting overbooked, or do you want to have it uh, be a, a separate time altogether, or what? What's your fancy? Well, if we go in front of a select we, board meeting, we might want to, uh, a lot of people, it might be too early for them, you know, uh, people that work. Yeah. Um, so we, we do want to have it as accessible, accessible to, to yeah. the whole general public as possible. So mm -hmm. probably a separate day. Yeah. Are, is that, are, are there, are there, are, is the list of, available to the public of what you've already committed the funding towards? A small list. It's a pretty small list, um, but we could. Um, um, I would think There's that would be like three or four things. Yeah, on it, three or four things. I think that that meeting that would be a good time to mm -hmm. you know have that conversation and share. I mean, we can um, put out a list if people are interested in or want to know. But it's um, right now. Well, couldn't you do that in the Couldn't you do that in the paper before the meeting or some I, I some means of letting the public know what you're already thinking of funding? Already. I think we have uh, mentioned some, but yes, in the the um, warning for the meeting, then that would could be included in that warning. That would make sense, yeah. And include like the amount of the funding because you said it's the dwindling funds. So 
knowing what you've already targeted towards what's in the list would be helpful. Yeah, yeah. Um, excuse me, Dune, where would the meeting be? You said it's a public meeting. Will it be there at the town office? It would probably be at the town office yeah. and and, and uh, with the Zoom, you know. Would you be willing to do Zoom as well? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay thank you. To that. Yeah. I feel like, Frank, did you have something that you've been trying to add? No. Okay. No, I'm good. I'm just, I got a pitch on the back of my neck. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Just scratching okay. the back of my neck. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um so let's see when. We're at um probably not next Monday because that's Memorial Day. Um, okay. And the Tuesday after that is the planning board meeting. We have the capital meeting scheduled for June first, I think. And then there's one every other week for that. Do you want to Could you do it Monday, June 6th? That's what Pat just pointed <laughs> at the calendar there. That's, um, yeah. Um, Does a one have to be 30 days? Is that just something different? I think for, uh, um, this is like a special meeting. I don't know if it has to be 30 days. So we took the, just like any other special select board yeah, meeting. Yeah, like the okay. special select okay. board meeting, yeah. So what do you say, the sixth? I like the sixth. Yeah. <laughs> what time? Six. <laughs> six at six. Perfect. Six, All six, right. Six. Good, and then in the uh, the warning we can, um, you know, detail what we've, um, what we've right. thought about. You might have to give that, give that some special accolades in the paper if you could. I'm, 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 that's why I was asking all the details. Yep. Yeah. All right. Because the following week, the 13th, you have one of your regular select board meetings. So Correct. You do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, does anyone else have anything else they'd like to speak about tonight? Then I'd move to adjourn. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Break says aye. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Good night, all. everybody. Good night. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night.